Hey everyone, I'm really excited today to give you a first look at LTX Studio. This is a platform that we took a look at a few weeks ago that offers you an unprecedented amount of control and features to generate AI films. And since I've partnered with them, they've given me the go ahead to take you on a tour of the platform. And I think you're gonna be really impressed with the amount of features that they've managed to pack in here. As a quick caveat, what we're looking at here today is early access. Basically, I have been alpha testing for them. So a few things might change on final release, but what's more exciting is that even with everything I'm going to show you today, there is still more to come. Okay, let's dive in. When you first log into LTX Studio, you will be greeted with the AI Storyteller module. I know this is fairly minimalist right now, don't worry. We're gonna end up populating this out pretty quickly. So clicking on that, from here you have the option of writing down your own film idea, or you can generate from a few of the different examples. Um, for now, I'm just gonna use one of the examples. We'll be taking a look at generating something on your own in just a minute. Uh, so let's do Shadows Whisper here. A detective with supernatural abilities investigates eerie murders, discovers a ghostly connection. That is my wheelhouse. From here, LTX Studio has not only given us the title of our story, Ghost in the Shadows, uh, a story overview, and actually casted our characters. And a big selling point of LTX Studio is the fact that these will be consistent characters throughout our story. Here's the plus side, this is all editable. So very minor, but I'm just gonna change the title to A Ghost in the Shadows, I, I like that better. Uh, and then for Jack Benjamin Rivers here, um, you know, it's okay. If we want, we can sort of re-roll him a few times, but ultimately if we don't like his overall look, we can come down to this edit button and now we can change Jack's overall appearance by prompting. So I'm gonna swap out Jack to having short, dark black hair. Uh, and then for his clothing, I'm gonna put a uh, black t-shirt and jeans. Apparently Jack shops at the same store. I do. There are a number of different options for Jack's voice. They seem to be adding new ones all the time too. For now, I'm just going to leave him on default, which is Josh Deep. And if you hate the name Jack, we can change out Jack's name if we want to. Although in the last 20 seconds, I really feel that we've bonded with Jack. So I'm just going to leave, uh, you know, what? I'm going to take the Benjamin out. He's just going to be Jack Rivers now. So from here, we just hit confirm. And in a few moments, Jack Rivers has repopulated to our new specs. Jack seems pretty intense there, so let's try re-rolling him one more time. Well, there you go. Jack is a very handsome dude. Um, as a note, you can even swap out Jack's face if you want to for like a photo of yourself. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna hit start and see what we get. From here, you will find yourself in storyboard mode, which is kind of an overview of your entire film. This is where you'll probably be spending the most amount of time in LTX Studio. Uh, you can see individual scenes are broken down uh, and then individual shots work vertically across. So let's take a listen to what the narration sounds like for scene one. As a detective, I've seen my share of darkness, but nothing prepared me for the supernatural. It's a little hammy, so let's rewrite that. So swapping that out for... Ten years on the job and I've seen my fair share of the other side but I still wasn't ready for this case. Still a bit hammy, but hey, it's a first draft. So now that we have our narration, we can begin manipulating our shots. Um, for example, we have a lot of shots of Jack back to back, which I don't particularly love. So what we can do is just hit this plus button and uh, we'll have a new shot generated and I can just drag this shot over to the front to make this an establishing shot, which actually is, it kind of already did an establishing shot, so that's pretty great. We can also come up here and change our various locations. So right now it's in a police station. I'm gonna change this out to detective office. And as you can see, everything begins regenerating based off of that location prompt. Uh, let's swap the weather out to uh, raining as well. We'll go full like David Fincher on this one. So I've also changed out the shot type to from above so that you know we kind of have that sort of dramatic angle of the rain falling and, and the camera tilted down. And yeah, that looks pretty cool. So from here, we can move into shot one, which would be you know Jack at his desk. I don't overall love this shot in particular either. So uh, again, we can begin swapping around. Uh, the shot looks good. Of course, we've got some morphing problems happening here. So I'm gonna turn down the motion scale a little bit and try to regenerate that. Uh, obviously these shots don't work that great. So I'm just gonna delete them. And then adding in a few more shots, I gave a file cabinet of old files here to represent his old case files, uh, followed by Jack sitting at his desk, reading an old case file worried. Uh, I can also prompt for an overall scene sound. Uh, so for example, while it's 
raining throughout here, uh, I can either individually go through and add in sound effects to each one of these shots, or I can give an overall, you know, scene sound that runs across this particular scene. So in this case, I'm going to put a uh, distant sound of rain. And there we go. Some nice rain sounds that will add some atmosphere to this particular scene. Uh, so let's move on to scene two. Again, we have some kind of canned dialogue here, so we'll swap that out in just a second. We can also change our lighting too. If you'll notice, we have Moody down here. So I'm going to change this out to Moody uh, Blue Hue, let's say. Uh, ooh, that actually looks pretty nice. So swapping out our VO to this. It started with eerie murders, seemingly unrelated except for one thing that no one else seemed to see. And so since through this sequence, it's pretty much just going to be Jack uh, investigating murders. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to ditch out my favorite shot here of the ghost. Um, so that was just as simple as coming up and deleting him. Uh, if you'll notice here, this actually isn't Jack as well. Uh, again, the build that I'm working with here is pre-release. So there are still some things that they're working out. So, but all we have to do is actually come up here and call him out by just hitting at Jack, um, Jack Rivers. He's tagged so now this will repopulate with an image of jack so because we have this longer dialogue sequence here but only these two shots uh what we can do as a bit of a time saver here is that we can just simply come up and duplicate out these shots uh we'll maybe give it uh four shots here slide our jack shot over to become shot two again uh rename this to shot three for consistency and then just change the angles up a little bit um to give us sort of a variety of shots maybe we'll call out jack in another one of these. For the final scene of our example, I've changed out the narration to this. A woman, standing on the outskirts of every murder, a stone expression, and she never spoke. But who was she? Yeah, I'm not winning an Oscar for best screenplay there, but you know, whatever. Um, so again, we just ended up tagging at Eleanor, the character that we generated up earlier, uh, standing away from a crime scene in the city. Um, again, our location is various crime scenes, so it knows that already. Uh, and then I popped her into two shots uh, with having interstitial shots between just to kind of break it up a little bit so that it wasn't just her face uh, and then her face again and then her face. And then we round out this scene with uh, Jack looking off into the distance, presumably at Eleanor. For the police tape shot, I ended up reprompting and got this, uh, which isn't perfect, but it looks pretty decent. There's some uh, nice, you know, movement happening on the police tape that kind of makes it look like it's blowing in the wind. Uh, yes, the spelling is still wrong. And I do think as a larger important note, yes, you are going to have to re-roll. That re-roll button is there for a reason. Um, you know, generally, if you prompt pretty solidly, you'll get some decent results. But, you know, obviously it's still AI video. You're still going to be hitting that re-roll button a lot. And then I ultimately did end up re-rolling our problematic Jack sequence here. Uh, one interesting thing that I found though, is that if you hit this edit button up here, you can actually get taken to the shot editor where you will have access to all of the shots that you generated uh, throughout this sequence. So this is our current one. Uh, we could also use this one, which actually I like, might like this one a little bit better. So uh, I've equipped that as the current one now. And when we return back to our storyboard over here, you'll see that that shot is now our current shot. Shot Editor also has a number of other different features in it as well, including you know the ability to change the duration of a shot, uh, bringing up or down your motion scale. But uh, interestingly as well, you'll have uh, controls like camera motion. This isn't available yet as far as I can tell, um, but you know, you'll be able to click and drag the cameras to different angles. You'll be able to scroll zooming in and out and click to drag. Negative prompts are here as well. And then probably something that a lot of you I'm sure are very interested in is the fact that you'll be able to bring in images to image prompt as well. So let's start tying this whole thing together uh, with a soundtrack. So we can come up to this tab for our background music and prompt for that. Currently, it's set to haunting, suspenseful, supernatural. Uh, let's give a listen to that. Deep. Don't love that. Sounds a little too new agey to me. So uh, let's swap that out. And actually Haunting Dark actually just sounds pretty cool. So uh, let's give that a listen real quick. Uh, you can also upload your own file, obviously, if you want to as well. So let's try rendering this out and see what this whole thing ends up looking like. 
So to do that, you just head up to the preview and export button and you'll have a couple of different options here. You can actually render it out as an animatic. So it would just be the stills with the voiceover underneath it. That will obviously render very quickly. Uh, you can render in standard mode, which could take up to 20 minutes. Uh, and then coming soon will be an upscaler. So after playing around with it a bit more and you know tinkering with the opening shots and a few other shots, because that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna endlessly tinker with this. Uh, I ended up with something that I more or less like. Ten years on the job and I've seen my fair share of the other side but I still wasn't ready for this case it started with eerie murders seemingly unrelated except for one thing that no one else seemed to see a woman standing on the outskirts of every murder a stone expression and she never spoke but who was she so yeah, that's pretty cool. There are some rough spots and we'll take a look at how to fix those in just a second. But overall, I mean, we were able to do that in a very, very short amount of time and we stayed all in one platform. I didn't have to bounce back and forth between a number of different tools. So just to give you some more ideas of the things that LTX Studio can do, uh, we'll come back to AI Storyteller here and I'm going to provide it with a story that I wrote. Uh, this is uh, very much a Twin Peaks inspired piece. We're gonna move off of the whole like, you know, dark crime thing in just a minute. But uh, so this is uh, Willow Creek, uh, where agent Dale Harrison investigates the disappearance of Laura Goodman. It's a murder. So adding in Pacific Northwest to the video reference gives everything sort of that Twin Peaksy sort of vibe. Um, we're going to take a Dale Harrison here who does not look very much like an FBI agent and edit him out. And now we've got this guy, but I'm gonna take things one step further by actually face swapping my face here. So uh, taking this picture of me, dragging it in, me as Dale Harrison. So let's generate this up and see what the story comes out as. And after a few moments, we do have our storyboards for Willow Creek, including uh, Agent Dale Harrison there starring me. But what if we didn't want to do Willow Creek in a standard cinematic style? Well, you could just come up to project settings here and change the video style. Let's just see what it looks like as an anime. Um, I don't know, a weird David Lynch anime. And after a few moments, we actually end up having our weird mashup David Lynch uh, anime hybrid thing where the town of Willow Creek now, you know, looks like it's uh, stepping out of a Ghibli movie. Uh, I will note that not all the shots will one-to-one -one here. Uh, like this one in particular, um, let me zoom in here a little bit. You can see there's like a hint of anime stylization, but I think the underlying cinematic uh, video source ended up sort of overpowering or you know coming through that said i would not exactly call this the ideal genre to match aesthetically to so let's try something more in line for example generating up something like the secret of the enchanted map which is about three kids finding a magical map and uh, you know going with the comic book style we end up with characters that look like this uh another aspect might be 3D model where they would look like this. And there's also a ton of other really cool styles in here like retro futurism, psychedelic, those kids got on the bus, or even watercolor. So yeah, there is definitely a lot of really interesting ways that you can go about telling a visual story with LTX Studio. Cyberpunk watercolor actually ends up looking really cool. I did forget to mention you can in and out paint as well. If you come up to this edit frame here, uh, we have in painting and, and magic erase. So I'm just gonna hit the magic erase here and zap this character out, making sure to get the reflection here as well. So let's give that a second and boom, character gone. So that's a look at LTX Studio as it is right now. But believe me, there are more features coming. And by the time it is in full release, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of quality of life updates. From what I've seen from the team, and believe me, I know you're probably thinking of like 200 features that you would like to see added. Trust me, they are aware and they are working on it as well. They're really committed to the idea of making this the best AI filmmaking platform. And given the amount of features that you can already do from in-painting to face swapping to generating sound effects and background music, uh, it's hard to argue that they aren't already there. And it really is only going to get better from there. LTX Studio has begun letting people in from the waitlist, so do make sure you are signed up. The link is down below and you can get access pretty soon. I'm really excited to see where the team ends up taking things from here, and I'm really excited to see what you end up creating with it. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.